Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, happy Friday. Welcome, everybody, from uh, sunny Zurich. Uh, we've almost made it. It's almost the weekend. Hang in there just the rest of the day to, uh, to get to before we have an amazing 30 plus degree weekend here in Switzerland. Um, hopefully, you can all hear us and see us okay. Uh, let us know in the comments, say hi, let us know where you're watching from, and I'm excited to, to host this session today. Um, my name is Lee Diamond. For those who don't know me, I am the owner of We Recruit, um, the recruitment to recruitment expert for the Swiss market. So we are helping agencies, uh, companies directly finding the best recruitment, talent acquisition and HR talent. Um, my goal, as always, is to be a positive promoter of recruiters, of recruitment in general, this fantastic industry uh, that we're in, and to try and bring the community together here in, in Switzerland. And this live session is part of the Swiss Recruitment Journeys uh, episodes. And I love these, uh, these sessions because we get an insight into some of the most inspirational passionate and importantly as well successful people in recruitment within the Swiss market and uh, I think it's clear to say today is absolutely no exception. Um, my guest Jenny Johnson uh, originally from Florida uh, she started her recruitment business in Switzerland more than 20 years ago um, together with her partner she built up a team of 55 people across four offices um, four locations, and she successfully exited when the business was acquired by Allegis Group uh, a few years ago. So this is a real, true success story, and I'm excited to hear all about it. So, Jenny, thanks again for uh, for joining us. Hopefully, I did you uh, did you proud with the introduction. You did, you did. Thanks, Lee, and thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. And uh, I'd like to also thank anyone, well, all of you who are joining today. Uh, We'll try to keep it interesting and uh, worth your while, for sure. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Happy absolutely. to be here. Yeah. Oh, perfect. I see a lot of comments coming in. So, yeah, keep them coming because every comment, every like um, helps us and the algorithm to let people know that we are on live and to that they can uh, they can see it too. Um, so, good morning, Afa, Andreas, Matt, Mark, Megan, Katerina, Lisa, uh, already lots of people saying hi. So thanks so much. For, uh, lots of names I know. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and we've e even got somebody watching from Nigeria. So fantastic. There you, go. there you go. Worldwide, Jenny. Worldwide. <laughs> okay. So, um, I mean, as, as I said, the, these uh, Swiss recruitment journeys are to get to know a bit more about, about you, about your career, um, some, of the, uh, some of the ups and downs uh, along the way. So um, I guess my... First question, keeping it very easy, um, is I always like to ask people, what did you want to do when you were young? Not everybody dreams uh, about as a, as, a, as a teenager and growing up, I want to be in recruitment. So uh, what, what was yeah. it like for you, Jenny? <laughs> oh, well, people who know me. So I actually grew up as well in California. Mm -hmm. And I went to a performing arts school. And so mm -hmm. what I really wanted to be was an actress from the time I was about 11. Okay. Yeah. And I was, I was going for it. I was doing it. But yes, that changed. That moved on to other things. And life does that. Okay. And, and actually, what, what brought you originally to Switzerland? Partner, my husband, okay. mm -hmm. um, as it does, but we had the opportunity to go to the States as well. But I just, I came here and I loved it and I just felt at home. I'm, I'm Swiss now, which is super mm -hmm. exciting. So, yeah, I came for that reason. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And so tell us, tell us a bit. Um, there's that expression, I fell into recruitment. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I always like to hear um, how, how did you get into recruitment? Well, when I moved here, um, obviously, so I had come from, I've been in sales leadership forever. So I had quite a senior mm. role, worked for a company for about 12 years in the States, was leading hundreds of people in a, a regional kind of direct way, but in the fashion industry, which mm. is another passion of mine. But it was, okay. and so when I came here, obviously not having the language skills, I was like, well, I can't do that. I can't get back into that. So, um, 
I really started, and obviously with a friend as well who helped me, I started to understand what this recruitment business was all about. I had no clue. I had never heard about recruitment in the States. I know mm -hmm. that's crazy. I, it's a huge industry there, but I hadn't heard about it. So I just thought, well, what am I good at? I love sales. I love connecting with people. I love working in teams. I love really helping customers. That was always my passion and discovered mm -hmm. recruitment. And it was a match. Okay. Of course. Seven companies turned me down before wow. one hired me. Yeah, I went through seven interviews, which was quite disheartening. And lucky to say they all, most of them tried to headhunt me later. And I said, too late. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had exactly the same, uh, same situation here in Zurich. I got told I was no good for recruitment um, in my early years of being here in Switzerland. And uh, then they tried to headhunt me afterwards. But uh, it's having a common, a common theme. I guess it's really down to the individual. And, you know, there's, there's so many elements that people can take into consideration at the time. But, um, yeah, yeah sure. I guess you proved them wrong. Yes. <laughs> Safe to <Hope> say. So. <laughs> All right. um, so after your kind of first experience in recruitment, I think it was about a year, right? If I'm if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. You then you then decided to uh, boldly and bravely set up uh, set up your own company together with your with your partner. Um, talk us talk us through. You know why 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 did you set up your own your own company at the time? That's crazy, isn't it, when I think back on it now? Well, I mean, the truth was I, I was offered the position of a sales manager, sales director, whatever they call it at the time, but I just didn't feel connected to that company. I mean, they left the country, I think, like four years later. I didn't really believe in the way they were doing things. So made the decision to leave and we both are kind of looking around at other companies because I hadn't thought, oh, I've got to go and open my own company. That wasn't it at all. But mm. there was no one I wanted to work for. And we spotted a real opportunity at that time for a kind of an international mindset type company that was very mm. customer centric. So that was like, you know, think big, but act small kind of a mm -hmm. thing. And we felt that there was space for that. And from day one, we went after the big boys. We used to do like create noise in the office and make mm -hmm. lots of papers move so that people thought we were a lot bigger than we were. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like two of us in the office. Yeah. So, so yeah, we spot an opportunity. We didn't find a company that inspired us. And so we mm -hmm. said, screw it. We're going to do it ourselves. And, you know, yeah, we just went for it. Right. And thankfully had the support of family um, and uh, took massive pay cuts and put in our 150,000 together and made it happen. Yeah. Luck too, right? Right yeah. place, right time. I mean, yeah, luck, absolutely. Everybody needs a bit of luck in our, in our industry and, and in, in, in business in general. But I think that you also create your own luck, right? Uh, it's something uh, one of my previous uh, bosses, Monica, always used to say to me, you create your own luck. That's, um, that's very true. And and so how how did that I mean how did that go to you know the first kind of year or two um, how quickly did did you grow um, yeah tell tell us a bit about those first couple of years. Well, if you think about it, we opened January two thousand one. We mm -hmm. had straight away you had wasn't two thousand one we had nine eleven so mm -hmm. you know September eleventh bombing. We then very quickly had the dot com crash. I think that was started really burning through. So it was tough. <laughs> I mean, it was really tough. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was, so I would, but the, so the first year or two, um, you know, we were doing most of the sales and everything and it was challenging, but it was, we could see the momentum, right? Mm -hmm. And then once things settled in and we were so lucky with some of the key hires in the very beginning, mm -hmm. Nicole being one who became a mm -hmm. partner in the business and we had Patrick who's, quite known in the business as well who joined we had an amazing Jane in the UK who was running recruitment and we just went Psh! and I think within within by the fourth year or even earlier we had hit our first 100 out along with the perm business that we were doing so yeah we we built momentum very quickly that was important to us so so it went but it was it was hard uh, that beginning really hard yeah. I can imagine a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. As, uh, Ooh, as they say. Yeah. No so, I mean, a, a, along along that journey, you know, why? If if you look back, I mean, why did why do you did you get to where you are? Like, were there some kind of key defining moments over those years? I mean, it was a, a long period of time. You know, more than fifteen years before uh, before the business was acquired. You know, 
yeah, why do you think you got to, to where you are? Well, there's two questions there. Why did we get to where we were as, uh, you know, as people? So there's mm -hmm. that side of it, of, of how we fought through some of those challenges. Mm -hmm. But I'll focus, if you'd like, on the defining moments. I think, you know, setting those milestones. So we had a very clear vision um, of where we wanted to go. And I think just pushing through and making sure that we are holding ourselves responsible for those key milestones. So the key defining moments were absolutely straight away, even when it was scary times, opening that second office, which was within, I think, the second year in Zurich, mm -hmm. because we mm -hmm. need that market. Remember, we started with life science and technology at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that was critical. You know, very early on, because we were able to build strong relationships, we were landing the big accounts very quickly. And within, mm -hmm. I think the fifth year, we were, were pushing number one spot at some of those. So it was having clarity about the milestones that we wanted to achieve and then putting in a laser focus on those. You know, it's so easy to get distracted. So I think mm -hmm. those were big ones. So that growth, that fast growth. Then uh, another big milestone was when we opened a bit the service business. Um, mm -hmm. Atlantis, that was a big one. And that really helped us through the tough times of 2008. Um, mm -hmm. And then I would say the next one was when we decided to nearshore and we created a big recruitment center um, mm -hmm. in, in Bulgaria. Okay. And that was another defining moment. So, you know, there were lots along the ways, but I would say those were quite critical in that, in that growth phase. And obviously, you know, there's the financial side when you hit that profit level and everything else. But as I said, we were very clear about the milestones um, that we wanted. And another defining moment was when, you know, my business partner decided to leave the business, which I believe she went on to do some other things in 2008. And so that was mm -hmm. a big, you know, a, a, a big change in the business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And I mean, tell me a bit more about Bulgaria. When, like, when did you set it up? Um, I, I mean, I've I've been through some kind of similar experiences on a, on a small scale setting up kind of um, near shore, for example, in Poland uh, with a team of recruiters. Yeah. I mean, this this is a challenge in itself, also to make them to give them the right kind of responsibilities to make them feel part of the organisation. Um, yeah, yeah tell, tell us a bit about that. Well, we. Um... Yeah, so we set that up in, I think it's like 2014. Sorry, I'm not ever good with exact years, but 2014. And it was a way, obviously, um, yeah, for many reasons. It wasn't really about cost savings, but it was about be, being able to create the capacity. But you're absolutely right. They had to be our people. So although we were yeah. working with a partner for all those sort of legal reasons of having entities there, they were our people. They were fully dedicated to us. And we were, you know, it's funny when I look back now, we were one of the first adopters of remote working in the sense of we would use Skype because there was no Zoom or anything else. Back yeah. then, but we would use Skype and everybody had double monitors and they had their own dedicated recruiters. And they were mm -hmm. on, the, on the video working in a way side by side all day long. And there were lots of, you know, we'd go there and we would have our annual kickoffs and bring them to Switzerland. So building that culture, we were able to do it. But it didn't come without some pains. And there are some challenges and there's some things I probably would do a little bit differently if I'd done it. But it was it was a huge success. And many of those people, I'm really proud, they've kicked off great careers. Like so many of them are now working as internal recruiters or head of recruitment. So I'm happy about that too, that kind of legacy that mm -hmm. for a lot of those people who committed to us because Ali just decided to close it when we were bought. Um, okay. But, but uh, at that time, you know, I see all those people have really done well. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's, 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 it's a tough one. And definitely if you did that in 2014, I think you definitely would have been one of the, uh, uh, one of the first, if not the first, yeah. to be doing that within the kind of, let's say, um, usual suspects and, and companies on the on the Swiss market. So, uh, yeah, how, how yeah, big did the team get to, actually? Um, I think we ended up, and, and I have to say again, Nicole, my my partner, mm -hmm. she was she was phenomenal in really making all that happen. So, you know, my hats off to her. Um, and so, I think we got up to about fifteen. Wow. And we had them all specialized and we had them mm -hmm. in you know, their pods. But I think that, that, well, it depends on the size of the business. So there's different ways I would do it. But I think mm -hmm. the fact that 
They were very connected to the customers. We even would go to the customer and do videos and everything mm -hmm. so they could get a sense of the client, the end client. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So there were some things we did really well and some things I would I would do differently that I've learned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was cool. It was good. Fun. Good a good experience, a good good learning yeah, for you useful for the future as well. Uh, yeah. knowing how to build these kind of teams. Okay. Yeah. So talking about size of teams, um what what is the hardest thing about leading and growing large teams in your experience over these years? Oh, um boy, there's so many. Okay, first, you have to start with that foundation because, and this is something that I really work hard with my clients because um, you have to build, it's like, I know the analogy of build a house if it's on a shaky foundation, but it's true. So if you don't have the right foundation, then it's impossible to scale your business successfully. You can scale it and you're mm -hmm. going to start to have massive fractures, right? Mm -hmm. And and we had this, sometimes we got it right and sometimes, so it was, you know, it wasn't always perfect, but Mm -hmm. Building that foundation is first building and how are you going to manage these people um, effectively. But I think the most important thing is you have got to learn how to give up that control and trying to mm -hmm. control everything. But you can't give up control if you haven't built the foundation. If you've not empowered people mm -hmm. through clarity mm -hmm. about what they're accountable for, not what mm -hmm. they do, but what they're accountable for. If you haven't built where people are as passionate as you are about the business mm -hmm. and, and where the business is going, you're, you can say I'm giving up control, but all you're really doing is going, yeah, you get it done. And then you're saying, Oh, you're crap. You didn't do your job. <laughs> <You're doing laughs> yourself, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why these people don't get what they're supposed to get done. So um, yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. It's really hard to let go. It's, it, yeah. it's easy to say the words in power, but if you started your business, it's your baby, right? Mm -hmm. But you, and that was the biggest thing is, is building that structure mm -hmm. and learning how to let it go. Yeah. Let your people run, get the hell out of their way. <laughs> I, I, I could definitely re relate, uh, relate to that. It's, uh, I think it's a struggle for a lot of people to kind it of. Was for I, think me every, too. I think everyone has a feeling of, you know, um, that they maybe do it the best and especially the, you know, I was having a conversation with a client over lunch, I think yesterday, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard because you think, okay, I, but that client relationship, for example, that that's with me and these people only want to work with me. And uh, I don't want to pass that on. And, you know, I'm worried that, you know, placements and opportunities get missed, and, and they're not going to think the same way as me. Um, but I guess that's, that's a, a positive thing as well, right? Because there'll be opportunities, yeah, maybe you, you will always. miss, and they won't. Exactly. And you don't yeah. always, you know, I, I know if there's people on this call, I didn't some and when you start, especially when things aren't going well, and this would be a mm -hmm. mistake that I would that I made. I remember um, getting some feedback uh, and the feedback is hard to take. I've learned how to take it a lot better now. But the feedback of how much you sort of impact things. So the, the, the heart in terms of you can be, you can light up the room and you can suck mm -hmm. the energy from the room. Yeah. And, and so, you know, we all go back and forth with that. So you have to constantly check and balance yourself. And if you surround mm -hmm. yourself with people who know more about things than you do and you yeah. let them get on with it, that's mm -hmm. the other thing. Remember, you don't know everything. You don't have all the ideas. Mm -hmm. um, that's for sure. So those are things. But it's a it's a process, mm -hmm. you know. And it and you have to constantly go. Oop, that's not mm -hmm. the conversation I wanted to have, or that's not the mindset I want to have. So mm -hmm. it's a process. You don't just yeah. wake up overnight and go. Oh, I've let go. <laughs> it's all yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't happen overnight for sure. But I think, you know, I, I always like to kind of be a bit of a judge of, you know, how well the, the teams and organization is running if I can go on holiday and not be bothered. Yeah. You know, um, I remember in my in my previous role, I, I literally I said to my team, OK, look, you know, I'm, I'm away now for, for two weeks. Um, you, all, you know, I trust you totally. You all know what you're doing. Um, yeah. unless the building is, is burning, like don't contact me unless the building is, is burning down. And in which case, anyway, contact the fire, uh, the fire, uh, what do you call it? Fire brigade, not me. Um, yeah. and, and if you could really go away and have that one, two weeks without being bothered and people had it under control. And I always said to people as well, look, take the decisions based on what you think is the right thing to do. I'm never going to yeah. um, be angry with you if you took the, uh, took the best decision you could in the moment. 
Um, and I think that, you know, as you say about empowering people and giving them that, that responsibility. And yeah, it's a good point. That was probably one of a big milestone when I could finally do that. And I remember twice I had to go for an extended period of time because I had to take care of my mother in the States who was ill. And, mm. you know, it's just, it's so impressive how much, you know, most of your people really care and step up when you give them the opportunity to do that and you give them the trust. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's amazing. That's why it's so fun. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. We had a, a comment before from uh, Graciela saying, yes, please, uh, leaders, empower people, believe in people. So thank you so much for the uh, uh, for the comment there. I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so this is one that I was very curious to, to ask you as well, because I think there's still some some challenges in the industry, still challenges in also in Switzerland. Um, yeah, I mean, how, how did you overcome some of the challenges of being a woman in this industry in such a leadership function? Um, yeah, t tell, us, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, I mean, there are still challenges, right? And I, I love this country very much, very much. Mm -hmm. But we are still, even now, a little behind. Now, imagine what it was like in 1999. I don't want to mm. go back before that. Um, do you know, I remember... so. So this is how I, 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 I could not believe this. I remember when I was this was before I had Stanford and mm. I get out there and, you know, just trying to find my way with my little German script on my computer because I didn't speak a word of German. Anyway, and I get in front of these customers and they they and I actually this happened repeatedly. You know, I tell you, you know, you're in that rapport stage and talking about the fact that I have two kids and blah, blah, blah and sharing. And I would have people actually say to me, I, I'm sorry you're a mom. Why are mm -hmm. you here? Why aren't you home with your kids? Wow. And I just went, wow. So instead of like maybe getting offended, I had to think about them and that's their problem and their mindset. Mm -hmm. And so I would just say, you know, this is for me, it's really empowering my daughters and I'm creating a great future for them. And isn't that what a parent's supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? So I feel really good about what I'm doing. <laughs> that, that showed up quite a bit. And then the other thing I did and I say this to a lot of the women who work for me, is mm. in a sense, ignore it, but allow it to fuel you. It fueled me. I mean, I was coming mm -hmm. up against, I was a foreign woman, mm -hmm. okay? So I didn't even have the language. I was a woman and I was coming against, most of my competitors were Swiss mm -hmm. owned, male owned, not all of them, some were mm -hmm. women, but they were still Swiss and they had relationships I did not have, right? They'd been around for a long time. And I was coming up against them. I had to beat them. And to be honest with you, I used it to just fuel this unbelievable, I've, I'm going to win. And mm -hmm. I had to outwork some of them. I had to work my ass off. <laughs> and <laughs> also, <laughs> I, had, I, I really focused on building incredible relationships with my clients who stood by me. But yeah, as a woman, it's not easy. And, and with, young, with young women who may come up against what can be in the technology space still male-dominated, it's mm -hmm. like, hold your own, girl. Stay focused. Mm -hmm. And if you just stay focused on the task and you deliver and you out-deliver the other ones, they will soon mm -hmm. forget you're a woman. Not that Absolutely. you need to forget you're a woman because <laughs> we're powerful, but, you know, they won't focus yeah. on that, right? Yeah. But so, I can imagine that was probably also quite... Um, quite refreshing and, you know, a bit of a uh, uh, breath of fresh air, you know, if you talk about that your competitors were uh, were male, perhaps older generation, things like that, and then you come in with this energy and, and uh, a you know, yeah. being, being a woman and, and a different proposition. Um, that's I, true. I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And then I also knew, you know, when you start a business, and I, I know our business, the entry to market is quite, you know, the barrier, sorry, it's, 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 there's not mm. much of a barrier to, to get started. But Remember when I said before about milestones, we, you've, you've got to know who your ideal customer is. Mm. There was no way we were going to go after, at that time, the SME tech market, right? There's mm -hmm. no way, right? We mm -hmm. don't have the language. We're not going to connect. So yeah. you, every business needs to understand who's my ideal client. Now, that client will change and grow as you're hiring people. And, or Sorry, mm -hmm. not grow, necessarily, but just change. So we knew that, and we put all of our energy, as I said to you before, that that laser focus, mm -hmm. we put that laser focus on this is our customer. And obviously mm -hmm. then, yes, you're right. That helped. 
and being a little yeah. different is oh, not always that's a good thing too that's a good point. yeah but but i think that's a great a great point for for recruitment uh, business owners and recruiters to think about you know who who is my ideal client i think sometimes we focus on the the market and the need to say okay so the the big internationals they they have their psls there's huge amount of competition so i want to go after the smes but do you speak the local language? Do you, okay. you know, have that network in that in that space? It's great to say there's an opportunity there, but if you're not the right fit for that space, um, it could be a, it a, a bigger challenge, you know. Yeah, yeah, if you're like, you know, if let's say you wanted to go into the real fintech startup community, mm -hmm. do you love it? Do you mm -hmm. get what they're doing? Are you kind of like, you know, in a good way, a geeky nerdy, you know, reading mm -hmm. all about that stuff? If you are, brilliant, mm -hmm. right? Because you're going to yeah. connect with them. If you're not, don't even think about it. So, yeah. so yes, that's a process that people really need to go through. And then when you decide you want to expand, will you hire mm -hmm. people who get into that? Absolutely. Right? I mean, Absolutely. that's fine. Like you said before, having people who are, who are an expert in a certain area, you don't have to have all of the knowledge, but you need right. to surround yeah. yourself with people who do. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Hire people better than you who know more than you do. Absolutely, which takes a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, somebody who's at ease with themselves as a, as a leader and, and um, put your ego away. To be able to hire people where you look at them saying, hey, this person's better than me, you know, um, which, which can be a challenge, I think, for, for a lot of people. But I love that, that what you say about, you know, people have to be really interested in what they do. One of the key things that I ask recruiters that I'm, I'm hiring, regardless of what industry and, and they're recruiting for in that moment, is what they're most passionate about, what industry yeah. appeals to them the most. Because if you're, you know, if you're going to work so hard and invest so much time, you need to be passionate about what it is that you're recruiting. I'm mm -hmm. blessed that I'm recruiting recruiters and I'm passionate about that space. Um, yeah. I feel far more passionate about this space compared to when I was recruiting IT. You know, I, I love to use technology um, yeah. and, you know, other things. But I, I, beyond that, that's, you know, my, my interest may be um, um, flattened out, let's say, uh, along the way. But, yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. I had the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely true. And it's, again, when I'm working with people, I just said, let's, let's start there, right? You know, it's really basic stuff, but it's important. Yeah. yeah. But then... Um, and just uh, hi to Thomas, who's joined the session as well. I see some other people as well. Daria, Jorge, thanks a lot for, for joining in. Um, what about um, maybe just to extend that question to during the acquisition, the, you know, in, into a very large, you know, basically one of the largest uh, um, uh, players in the industry. You know, how, how was that from the acquisition being part of that global organization, which I can imagine or maybe it's my perception that was also very male dominated and you know, your, your situation of you know being the the leader of this extremely successful business in Switzerland and now you're plugged you know and not having to report to somebody else and now you're you're in this global organization yeah well I mean to be fair you know I was kind of we were left to do our thing so mm -hmm. we were integrated um but mm -hmm. not we were still separate in that sense okay. Mm -hmm. um and yeah i remember going to this big conference and i remember and they're they're a great company and i know they're making lots of strides and pushing hard mm -hmm. to improve their diversity um all, and inclusion you know not just about the the gender but i remember hearing these words and if you looked up at all the presidents mm -hmm. they're all white middle-aged men and yeah. i'd really like to see that change because they'll mm -hmm. be an even more resilient more successful company and i know it's something they're working on and and I want to see those women come through, but and people have to accept that women might are as effective leaders, but they may lead slightly differently. And not everybody mm -hmm. has to look, sound, act the same to be yeah. effective. So, so I I saw that, and then I realized that I think the thing about not so much as a woman, but some of the challenges of joining a corporate was there's a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who do a lot of things or not do a lot. I don't know. I really I'm like, who actually gets certain things done? Yeah. <laughs> so it's I think that was that was my bigger struggle. But yeah, all these men, I just thought it's it's um it's hard to break through that. It would have been mm -hmm. really difficult. And and they would look at me as someone didn't come through and go, what do we do with her? And mm -hmm. I think they did struggle a little bit. Like, what do we do with her beyond? 
you yeah. know, because clearly I didn't sell my company just to turn around and keep running it. The whole point yeah. you know, was to, to, to allow that. Um, and I'm not sure if they knew really what to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So my direct boss, Sean mm -hmm. Lindahl, who was who was really the one who who pushed that we were acquired because he knew they we needed a Swiss business. Um, mm -hmm. He he was great. He, he was not at all an issue and and was very very much starting to see the the power of the women who worked for him. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, but let's go back a, a step. Um, you know, you had a successful business, you were more than 50 people across the different offices. Um, why, why, did you decide to, to sell, uh, to, why did you decide to sell your business? Hmm. And, and when did you, like, was it a, a well, quick... I never, I, no, it wasn't, you know what I used to always say, and I, I talk to oh. my, my clients now, we, we really start at that vision, but not vision of the business, vision of their lives, hmm. right? And... I think I always, from the beginning for me, and it doesn't matter if you want to build a lifestyle business, fantastic. If you want to build a business that maybe your children want to run, fantastic, mm -hmm. right? But it's understanding what you want. I always knew I want to build a business that somebody would want to buy. And I used to tell my people, mm -hmm. I said, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm loving what I'm doing. I'm passionate mm -hmm. every day I walk in this door, but I definitely want to build a business that mm -hmm. someone would come to me and say, Hey, mm -hmm. we like this business. So, and yeah. that, then you do do it things a little differently when you're, yeah. when you're doing that. And I think about a few years before um, we were talking to Allegis, um, I was thinking about what's that next stage, because it's all about your people and creating mm -hmm. opportunity. If you want to hold on to great people for the most part, not always, but most of them are going to want to have growth, do different things mm -hmm. and so on. And if, if you're, if you're not, and if a business isn't growing, it's, and it doesn't mean you have to have crazy growth, but if you're not mm -hmm. moving forward in mm -hmm. some way, then obviously you're going to be going backwards. Right. Yeah. And we were doing, we were, had, had such successful years and you always, if you're going to look at an acquisition, don't do it when it's down. <laughs> do it when it's up. So I knew that was the time. And I want, I had ideas for my next chapter and the, the only way I was going to create the growth that we needed was to merge. Mm -hmm. Didn't see anyone I wanted to merge with. To and maybe merger would have been an option. Look at a VC. Mm -hmm. VC for me was out of the question. I, I if I had done that, I've done it six years ago. So mm -hmm. that was when I thought I'm going to at least talk to these people. Mm -hmm. And so I started talking to companies, and Allegis was the perfect match. And I'm really proud they're rocking and rolling. Most mm -hmm. of the people that were with me are still all there, all in mm -hmm. the same leadership position. So mm -hmm. it was the right thing. It was the right yeah. thing. And like I said, sometimes you got to know when you need to get out of the way. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, think, I think that's, you know, it's a really important point as well. When you have a, a business as, as you did with that amount of people, I guess at some point, there's restrictions to what people can do in the organization. They reach the, the top and unless they want to kind of, let's say, reinvent the, the wheel, open a new division, something like this. You know, I had similar experiences to, uh, you know, myself at the beginning of my career after six years reporting to the owner of the business and, you know, mm -hmm. leading a team. But that was as big as my role could be there. I wanted mm -hmm. to manage more people. I wanted to to see more mm -hmm. things outside of mm -hmm. uh, outside of that. And I think that that yeah by by the acquisition you were then able to offer people maybe more european or global positions that they Absolutely. could move into um and yeah just different possibilities probably also a lot more around training and development and and uh, yeah global uh, global possibilities as well right in the sense yeah. they could even move to another country uh, which yeah, yeah. yeah that's why i was so particular yeah. i even had one company offer more money but I was yeah. so particular that it was the right match because yeah. I know that sounds and might people may go, oh, you know, everyone says that. But it's true. My people, it had to be right. I couldn't, mm. I, I couldn't have, yeah, I couldn't have just said here and then they had a disaster and it hasn't been. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm happy about that. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, um, so then let's, let's talk about maybe what you underestimated. Um you know, it's a, it's a big thing to go through. Oh. Um, hindsight is twenty twenty, as they say. What, yeah. what, what do you think you underestimated? It, it might be just in, in business in general. It doesn't have to be purely about the acquisition and so, but yeah. Okay. 
Uh, well, all right, let's talk about during the, well, first of all, I understand how much due diligence there is. Oh, my God. It took a long time. But yeah, now that was one. It's a complicated process. Um, mm. I underestimated. Well, actually, I, in a way, I underestimate how good we were and how much we knew. Actually, mm -hmm. I saw some of the things we were doing that this big company wasn't doing. Now, mm -hmm. that being said, we also learned a lot from them, too. Yeah, of course. Clearly. Yeah. yeah, of course. Um, so I think I underestimated that. I, I did not underestimate, I think, the impact on people. So that was managed well. And they also <laughs> managed the integration softly. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really important. You know, they, they took their time with that. But I think the biggest thing that I underestimated was the emotions. Okay. Hmm. That's hard. It was yeah. it was exciting to see what the opportunities for everyone. But, you know, when you're used to this is your baby, it's your name there. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you're not really the one making all the decisions. Um, mm -hmm. You start to feel a little bit like a fourth wheel, third yeah. wheel, you want to say? Fourth wheel. Mm -hmm. Four wheels are good. Fifth uh, wheel. Fifth wheel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, if, it's a mo if it's a motorbike, a third wheel, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> third or fifth wheel. A little bit like a fifth wheel. So that's difficult. Mm -hmm. That that takes its toll on your energy. And I mm -hmm. think finally, the thing that I underestimated was the when when the decision, you know, when we decided to leave. Because I did go in thinking I might have, like you did, you know, oh, I'm going to maybe do a different job, mm -hmm. but that'll be cool, right? I, I'm international, being American, mm -hmm. you know, I thought, yeah. but clearly, as I said to you, sometimes these big organizations, everything's in a box. And if you are outside of that box, you can forget it. Yeah. You know, in the big, big boys yeah. or corporates. So, yeah. um you know, that didn't really happen. So the decision was, let's go. And it was like COVID time. And, and I agreed, like we both like this, this isn't going to work um, mm -hmm. for me in the, in the long term, too. And so what I underestimated was to have my next mission clear. Yeah. So that first year was hell. <laughs> it's like someone cut off my arms <laughs> maybe even my legs yeah. so it was so emotional and I didn't expect that people people say oh and then people kind of say hey cool now you can go to the beach and hang out and mm -hmm. yeah I went to a month in Croatia and all that was awesome mm -hmm. but we are purpose-driven people Absolutely. people who start companies right like mm -hmm. you and I'm I'm, I'm I'm older than a lot of people in this audience but I'm not over the hill and I still have so much to give but I hadn't planned that mm. and so I really underestimated how much I missed everybody how much I missed mm. that that mission that I had every single day yeah that you, yeah yeah you had a purpose you had uh you know you had your baby there the organization and then yeah all of a sudden that that changed I can't, I can't imagine how that would uh how that would feel the I'm sure a lot of emotions around it of course that's probably the transition that you needed to make anyway yeah. throughout that period luckily it wasn't just a, a a flicker switch you know you sell the business there you go thanks very much because that would have been oh. probably like ripping your ripping your heart out uh, yeah. at least you can yeah. you know kind of guide the people the organization along yeah. along the way but I guess ultimately when a comp a large company acquires a business they they somehow want to um I think somebody said this to me a, a few weeks ago that they somehow want to, you know, they, they're successful in opening and building businesses all over the world. They have a certain formula. They yeah. come in. You've done these things and, and you're doing a great job and it works really well. And they say, yeah, that's yeah. fantastic, but we're going to do it differently. And, yeah. you know, um, and, and um, you know, there's part of you, I'm sure, that wants to say, yeah, but hold on, we've been really successful doing this way. And and they're, they're saying, OK, but we've scaled businesses globally in, in right. you know, 30, 30 different countries by doing it this right. way. So thanks. But, we, you know, it's we're going to we're going to do that. So, um, right. yeah. yeah, that's hard. I mean, I'm, I am someone who's very open to change. And I also mm -hmm. am very like I love to learn. I love I'm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I don't really have a, a big ego in that sense. Mm -hmm. So I was listening and learning and, and I'm, I'm happy for that time that I had because I did learn a lot um, that, uh, yeah. that I will always have with me. But yes, exactly. In the end, they've got their, their ways of doing things. And mm -hmm. luckily, that's one of the reasons I chose them is it was very similar anyway to how we did things. So the cultural mm -hmm. shift wasn't too scary um, yeah. for the people. Yeah. Okay. So... Mm -hmm question i'd love to ask you 
um, just to poke the bees nest, so to speak, as well. But I mean, if you would do it all again, you know, um, what what would you do differently, if anything? Breathe more. <laughs> um, no, I. I um, what would I do differently? Well, first of all, most of the things you're going to make mistakes, right? That's not. It's not possible if you're not making mistakes. I know if you're not making mistakes, you're not trying things. So Absolutely. there are definitely some things I would do differently with in hindsight, but would mm. I have at the time? I think the number one thing that mm. I would do differently is I would have focused far. I, I never, I don't think I ever got too comfortable, but mm -hmm. I would never, I would have focused far more on constantly hiring potential leaders for my future businesses and for the mm -hmm. future business and anything else like mm -hmm. been very proactive in my mindset even from mm -hmm. a recruiter level this person is going to be a future lead and I'm going to and and I did some of it I would have done more of it because okay. the biggest disasters were when I took external leaders mm. not external people but external leaders mm. okay. it just never worked <laughs> It's, it does work. It can work in big, big you know, companies again, mm -hmm. but because people are also used to that. But in a smaller business, you know, it's, it's not that it's impossible, but it's challenging mm -hmm. because people need to come through the business and have the heart, that business in their heart, and they have to lead mm -hmm. with their heart. And so that's something I, yeah, I would do that differently. I would, I would absolutely um, look. And I probably would have been, braver when things were going well i could have pushed mm -hmm. on the gas even more yeah i think the whole proactive kind of when, when you think about hiring i think we get too stuck sometimes in kind of business as usual just running dealing with what oh, we've got cool. going on as opposed as opposed to kind of looking looking more into the future and how that's going to look in a year or two within that team within you know having yeah. backup plans succession planning right. i think especially Again, you know, the smaller you are, the harder that is to 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 do as well. But um, yeah. I think that's that's a challenge for everybody, and I think it's it's a it it's it's hard to kind of keep that in mind. Um, I wonder how you can train yourself uh, to do that, and and yeah, to be brave and bold to to take risks, a few more risks, and say, okay, you know, here's a senior that's person, what you want to do. person we can bring in. Yeah, yeah, if that's what you want to do, right? That's why yeah. I said knowing. And constantly, it's kind of like, you know, when you start your January and you think about your personal and you set your, whatever they're mm -hmm. called. I never you do this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, New Year's resolutions. Like New Year's resolutions. Yeah, resolutions I don't do. Goals yeah. is different. But you need to do that. I'm, I'm not just talking about doing your strategy. You need to check back in with yourself and be brutally mm -hmm. honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. and this is, you know, where sometimes coaches or your advisors or whoever you have mm -hmm. can help you because mm -hmm. you, you that, that absolute honesty you need to do that. And that means honesty about your business. Are you being mm -hmm. too afraid? Are you taking too many risks? Are you, mm -hmm. has the vision for your business changed? Do you really mm -hmm. have the right people in the right job? Or do you just not want to get rid of them because you like them and it's comfortable and they're okay. Mm -hmm. They're not great. They're okay. You mm -hmm. know, these are things where you have to have that absolute brutal honesty with yourself. You check yourself sometimes. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. Sometimes we don't want to hear what we're, our head's telling us. <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes it's, you know, I, I think it's also tough, you know, speaking from personal experiences during a pandemic, you know, change the market massively. You go from, you know, being in a very comfortable situation to kind of, okay, we need to pivot, we need to change, we need to adapt. Yes, um, and, you know, I think, you know spe speaking with, exactly speaking with the, some of my clients today, I think they're still a little bit conservative and, and a bit afraid of, of taking a risk because of uh, what's what's happened the, the market right now is fantastic we're all riding a wave yeah. how long is that going to go on for you know do, do yeah. you over commit or extend right now um and and how does it look going forward so i think that's yeah. uh, definitely a challenge as well yeah. and you just reminded me there's something that i would do differently sorry this is important because we are so driven typically mm -hmm. people are running their you know own and man owner managed businesses I needed to stop and breathe sometimes and take the mm -hmm. time to celebrate the successes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't mean take your foot off the gas, but sell no. or petrol. Um, but I mean, stop and celebrate the successes and allow your people to celebrate before you're already mm -hmm. saying, okay, this is what we're doing next, which is what I yeah. would do. I know that. And I've learned that. So that's something I would do differently. Do more yeah, of absolutely. something I never did it. Yeah, we have, uh, we have a plan of... Uh, 
Uh, it wasn't my choice. It was the choice of the the, the team uh, to go to Disneyland Paris uh, for a weekend with all the families and kids and everything. Uh, yeah, if we uh, yeah. if we reach our target this year, so oh, let's uh, yeah. let's see. Hopefully, you see us then. Hopefully, you see cool. us. Cool. Okay, we've had a few comments come in. Thank you so much, Nieves. Uh, said top series, excellent questions and interviews. Thank you very much. Um, Jane Bishop also here saying oh, lovely to see you, Jane. Jane. Still very proud of our startup year, years at Stanford. Thank you so much, Jane, Jane for the message. Thanks, and Jane. Katrina coming in um, for the thanks for sharing your empowering and inspire, inspiring journey. Uh, it's been a fantastic uh, role model of, uh, of of ladies and uh, leaders in general, AFA as well. Um, yeah, fantastic. So um, let's see what um, what I would like to to ask now. Um, I've got a couple more questions to go. What was the hardest time? Looking back. Oh, that's so easy. <laughs> no, there were so <laughs> many hard times, but and more good times than hard times. 2008 to 2010 slash 11. Mm. Uh, we all know 2008. Um, mm. oh, some of the conversations I had to have with procurement. And I mean, just that was hell for all of us. Yeah, all all the contractor year, rate cuts and everything going yeah, on. And just all of a sudden, everything dropped out of the market. And you're like, am I going to mm -hmm. have to let people? go blah 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 and I mean it's just and, and it's yeah so 2008 kind of started it that was also when my partner left and mm -hmm. so you had all that emotion and you know trying to I also had um you know trying to to um to to manage things effectively so people mm -hmm. still felt good coming in and and, and weren't scared but everyone was nervous and it lasted a little bit longer than I wanted it to, probably because of the partner changes. But I mean, I had to get really good. And that's when I learned how breathing and meditation and because I was, you know, I was there. I was on the mm -hmm. brink of, of, you know, not. But I knew my I people knew saved too. me. Yeah, mm -hmm. they saved me because this business wasn't just about me. This business mm -hmm. was about all the people who had committed, you know, all the mm -hmm. people who were counting on their future and that, and there were two people and they know who they are I, um, in particular who besides Nicole, but the, anyway, there was not just two, there were quite a few, I should say that, mm -hmm. that saved the business and saved me really. They, because we, we were able to breathe, stop, remember what we know we need to do and push through. And that's when we just went like that. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was a lot of reassessment and couldn't have done it without these amazing people. I mean, I've mm. been so lucky. So and I'm so grateful. I think we, we hear the expression uh, all the time that it's it's all all about the people. And, you know, when you ask people, when you ask companies, what's your USP? Oh, it's, it's the people that we have. But I guess it is on many, many levels. Right. Um, well, we're in the people business. <laughs> I mean. Absolutely, it is so in our about business it. more so than uh, than many others, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so one one thing I'd like to ask you, be, like, if we compare the market today, the industry today, to mm -hmm. when you started your business, I think it, you okay. know, when you started, you said you felt there was a gap for this fresh, international focused uh, mm -hmm. uh, company. Um, what what do you think is different now from when you started it, and what do, what do you think um, challenges? new owners face compared to when you started it let's say i don't i don't think okay it's different in switzerland that switzerland's obviously a lot more international there's a lot more people sort of out there doing it and, and a mm. lot more companies have settled here so i think that international and all that but some of the other things you know are still the same essentially what we do is what we do and mm. um and how to be successful is that but i think i want to say there are challenges and opportunities mm -hmm. technology is both to mm -hmm. our industry, right? Mm -hmm. It's enabling us to be very good at what we do. It's enabling mm -hmm. us to reach people in a way that, you know, I was with one at a workshop the other day with one, I was like, wow, if I'd had these tools, you know, we didn't have them. But then yeah. the flip side to that is we also talk to people, you know, we had to do things in a more creative way, you know, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. there's, so it's both. And But in this way that technology can empower the mm -hmm. businesses today and, and make them more effective. It's also doing that with the clients. Yeah. So you've got 
you know, you've got to think about the fact that they're also able to tap into talent in the way that they couldn't before. But no matter how good, I heard of a company in the U.S. that started and there are these two women and they're like determined that they're total disruptors. There's always disruptors in our industry. Everyone's and, disruptors, a disruptor. and because their AI is so good, they yep. can make placements for $1,200. Okay. Wow. I mean, they're, they're doing exec, uh, executive assistance or whatever. But And okay. I'm like, okay, but in the day, it's about people. And that's why we need great recruiters, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think the next challenge is, was already coming in when I was running. And it's, again, can be an opportunity. But these MSPs and um, that are in, it's that the fear. And this, it kind of, I think, became a little difficult for me. But that disconnect, mm -hmm. thankfully, you don't disconnect from the candidate. But mm -hmm. that disconnect from the end client that they're trying to sort of push I understand why they're doing it. I understand yeah. that managers don't want 20 calls a day. I understand mm -hmm. they need to control costs and I get it. But yeah. there also is one of the reasons why they feel they get a bunch of garbage in their inboxes. Mm -hmm. And it's because mm -hmm. a lot of times you've got recruiters who don't have a clue what the manager actually wants, yeah. right? So, if you treat people like a commodity, or if you treat recruiters like a commodity, yeah. um, you then have maybe a different level of experience, people kind of delivering and focusing on those roles. Um, takes a lot of the fun out of it as well. Um, I went yeah, through that transition yeah. of having a client that where everything was personal relationships to them being a, an MSP over a period of about probably three years or so, four years when I was um, look, uh, you know, managing the account. And it took so much of the fun out of it. You know, oh. uh, you, you went from, from meeting with people, building real relationships. Maybe you were competing against one other per company, maybe two. But, you know, they were working with me because they wanted to work with me and because I delivered um, as opposed to, yeah, I, I, f I felt like it, it just changed the, the co tech contracting business massively and others. But, yeah, it, it did. But I, yeah. and again, when you look at these things and there's all other challenges, you know, now mm -hmm. you can do a lot more with remote workers. And, you know, there's, there's so many things that I think everybody's aware of. And that's mm -hmm. part of your strategy. Right. You see those mm -hmm. are external threats. How do you mm -hmm. deal with them? They're not going to go away, right? Yeah. So how do you deal with them? How, what what do you do to, and that's what you have to stay focused on because they're not going to go away. But you do need to keep your eye on that. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of companies, they struggle as well because the, the people in it, they're so in it, right? They're weeding mm -hmm. and looking at the garden. Meanwhile, there's a massive truck that's about yeah. run over. So you do need to take that time, take two, three days away, and think mm -hmm. about these things, read, get a vision for what's happening, you know, mm -hmm. um, because then you'll be able to be a lot more better prepared. Yeah, sounds sounds like good advice. Sounds like good advice. So let me ask you, um, I guess we're coming to the to the end of the session. Yeah, we are. Um, yeah. I have a couple, of, a couple more questions I'd like to um, just check with you, but and a very exciting one for me to ask, because I know that you've got some things going on. Um, is where do you see yourself in the future? Um, or I guess probably more so, where do you see yourself in the moment? Because now is the future for you in that sense. That's right. That's right. Um, that took me a while too to kind of figure out because I have, and it's not off the table that I wouldn't do, mm. doesn't that just have to be recruitment, but do another business. So I, I still mm. keep those things and I'm an investor in businesses. So I help mm. run those and that's all great. But it took me a while to figure out, but I, I went back to my roots. What what do mm -hmm. I love? What have I always loved? And I've always mm -hmm. loved developing people, people, inspiring mm -hmm. them, watching them grow. And so helping them achieve their goals. So by going back mm -hmm. and taking that time to think about my true purpose as a mm -hmm. human being, not my purpose in my work, but my mm -hmm. what I feel is my purpose and what I'm I'm good at, that's what mm -hmm. led me to the the business coaching because um, I know I can make a difference and I can help people and I love it. So my mm -hmm. future is really about, you know, creating a business that inspires me, number one, mm -hmm. and then has a real lasting impact with my customers. Um, mm -hmm. That's my future and it's going well. I'm learning a lot and and uh, I hope, yeah, and, and hopefully making a difference with some with some clients and let's see. But that's I'm definitely sure you I'm I hope sure so. <laughs> Plan to. Yeah, it's a, it, sound, it sounds like an exciting, uh, exciting future, and uh, you know, I know and we're we, going to do something, right? We're going to do something, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, um, we have a project that we're going to be launching um, in July. Um, 
yeah, I mean, maybe maybe you wanna wanna share a few words about what we wanna do, or yeah. Um, you want me to? Yeah, or shall I? Or... Yeah. Well, we just you came to me actually, and I yeah. thought about you know you always think about what do I wish that I had had when mm. I was building the business, and that includes someone by my side helping me through it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, in terms of like mentoring and stuff. So I think we talked about it and said, why, why are we so in this business? We don't get together and we mm -hmm. don't support each other peer to peer and share ideas, share synergies, um, yeah. share pain sometimes, you mm -hmm. know, it's really lonely. It can be mm -hmm. so lonely when you're running your own business. So, you know, I think, yeah, we talked about it. So why can't we create this group for owner managed businesses and, and, you know, brainstorm ideas, have interesting speakers, talk about legal things, whatever. I mean, and it's exciting. It's exciting yeah. to me. I think, it, you know, it's, it's, it's like you said, when, you know, when I started my business, even now, you know, coming up now four years into the business, there's so many times where I think, oh, I wonder, you know, should I be doing this? What, what about that? I wonder how other people do it. And I think that, um, we should be just, just like these sessions I do to try and improve the, the, perception of recruiters of recruitment to show awesome. the leaders and people be, behind it to be a positive promoter of our industry and i think bringing the manager owned recruitment um startups owners together in a community to support each other to address topics to to raise each other up um you know from 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 everything you know how how do we grow and um, what challenges do you have i'm sure everyone has very similar uh, similar pains and you know I when and how to raise financing if they I mean there's so much right exactly, and thing, exactly. What I can't understand is if people are afraid of that and that's what I I mean we did this a long time ago I don't know if you remember but I did this myself with some of the mm -hmm. leading agencies here and I mm -hmm. never understood why can't we get in a room what are we afraid of we're not yeah. going anywhere yeah. everybody yeah. knows each other's shit anyway <laughs> like, there's, there's, I mean, th that's the thing um you know there's nothing so unique so secretive i can no. almost guarantee you that there is 99 percent of the things that each company does everyone else is aware of there may be right. something someone does a little bit more unique than others or a little bit more creative or, or, or original um but day to day we're all doing the same thing we're trying to do okay. it with quality with passion and and so i think you know, I'm trying to, I feel I have the network and the connection to people to bring everybody together. Um, I had another another um, person from my network yesterday say to me, hey, I'm starting up my own business. I'd love to have an exchange, learn a bit, help, uh, you know, maybe you can help me. I'm like, hey, listen, we've got this uh, this um, uh, group coming up, okay. uh, Swiss Recruitment Startups. We're launching it in, in uh, July. Um, and, it, and that's exactly what it will be, bringing uh, manager-owned recruitment com companies and managers together to support each other, help each other. And I'm super excited to be doing that with Me you. Me too. Let's do yeah. it and make sure we're the ones beating the big boys, the big yeah. internationals, right? Let's let's get Absolutely. the owner-managed ones doing that. <laughs> Absolutely. As a, as a big believer and, and fan of boutique, manager-owned, these yeah. kind of style companies and the way that they're led, um, and being one myself. So, yeah, you know, exactly. it, it all, I'm exactly. sure I'm looking forward to learning a lot as well. Exactly. So, awesome. Fantastic. Hey, Jenny, thank you so much um, you. for joining me, for giving up the time. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I did, I, hope, I did. I hope Sorry if I blabbed blab away. <laughs> Listen, that's, that's the whole idea. And thank you so much, everybody, for watching, for the comments. Uh, we really appreciate it. And, um, yeah, and if guess... anyone ever wants to get in touch with me about anything, including mm -hmm. some of the young female leaders out there who just, they connect with me on LinkedIn, you know, just um, by all means. And I'm happy to talk for whatever. That's what I'm here for. Absolutely. And a, and a quick plug for She Recruits, um, which is uh, our uh, Katrina's yeah. um, networking group for uh, female uh, recruiters. If you don't know it, if you're not part of it, make sure you go check it out on LinkedIn as well. So with that, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you, Jenny, so much. I wish everybody a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the sunshine. Uh, I'm going to get out of this waistcoat as soon as I'm offline. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dedication to the brand. So I'm going you. to Art Basel. So <laughs> see ah, ya. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Happy weekend.